Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Kane, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Wonderboard Board NorCal. Thank you for attending our Automating Plant Reports with Dream Report webinar today. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or email us at webinar at norcal.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenters for today's webinar. Your first presenter is Sherry Lewis. Sherry is a Senior Account Manager at Wonderware NorCal. And your second presenter is Mike Lapitan. Mike has been a Wonderware NorCal product specialist for the past six years. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Sherry. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, and thank you, Kelly. And thank you all for joining us. My name is Sherry Lewis, and I'm an Account Manager for Wonderware, which means that I get to go out into the field to work with customers to find out about their system operations and how they can best leverage their investment with Wonderware so that they can get the most out of their system. I'm going to do a review of what Dream Report has to offer, but before I do, I'd like to show you our website at nordcal.wonderware.com where you can register for upcoming events like webinars, workshops, and training classes. We also offer workshops at our San Francisco office, which are free half-day events and are hands-on at our Wonderware facility. As you can see here, you can register right here. Um, we do have some spots open at our InTouch class next week. And then uh, for some Dream Report hands-on experience, you can register for the December 12th Plant Reporting Workshop at our San Francisco office and see how Dream Report works, how to build basic plant reports, pies, graphs, charts, and so on. All of our workshops are a great introduction and learning tool. Here's our webinar schedule. We have a, a live webinar coming up on December 4th. But for a view of our archived webinars, you can go right here and view any of the past webinars as well. Go back here. Our agenda for today, we're first I'm going to do a short Wonderware NorCal introduction, then a Dream Report introduction. We'll do some example reports. Mike Lapitan's going to do a live demo, and I'll go over some additional capabilities, and then we'll have a Q&A. Wonderware has been around since 1987 and is the number one HMI and SCADA software provider in the world. We have the largest installed base, and the reason why it's so popular is because of its ease of use, it's very reliable, and it has a great reputation in the marketplace. We have over 750,000 licenses to date at over 150,000 locations, and we have 3,500 system integrators to support Wonderware globally. If you installed Wonderware over 25 years ago, you can still run that application on Windows 7 and now 8 to today without having to rebuild that application. So we've been around the longest and we have the best preservation of investment in moving forward. Wonderware NorCal has been your local resource since 1992. We provide local training and te local technical support. Training is based out of our San Francisco office Technical support is based here out of Northern California in the Bay Area, so everything's local. Wonderware Corporate is down in Southern California in Lake Forest, and that's where development is headquartered, as well as additional training. I mentioned earlier that we have free Wonderware workshops to get you ed educated on how to take advantage of Wonderware solutions. And of course, we offer webinars like this, and we offer system consulting, where we can talk about your specific project needs and requirements so that we can help you design a system, figure out best practices, and how to take advantage of software to help solve your automation problem. We work with over 70 registered system integrated integrator partners here in Northern California, so if you're looking for somebody to help you with a project, we can recommend somebody in your area with expertise in your industry. I mentioned we have local technical support based here in the Bay Area. That picture you see is Daniel Nicholas. He's one of our technical support staff dedicated to answering your calls as they come in. Over 90% of your calls are answered live based on a typical month sampling done in May of this year. You can also reach us at support at norcal.wonderware.com or 866-966-3376. Our commitment to you is that you get your answers questions answered now so you can keep developing your projects, you keep moving forward, not having to wait for overseas support from somebody who isn't familiar with the products. We here at Wonderware NorCal are dedicated to you to provide the best technical support available. Plant provides
performance management systems typically allow plant personnel at all levels to visualize and analyze plant performance via real-time and historical data trends and reports. They enable the easy sharing of plant data, often via the web, in real time to accelerate operational decisions. Plant reporting can expose valuable real-time information on process upsets and inefficiencies so remedial actions can be formulated and implemented immediately. It can expose quality issues that increase costs and jeopardize customer satisfaction. Plant performance management systems supply the detailed and focused information manufacturers need to better operate their plant and make significant gains in plant profitability and competitiveness. Industrial automation plants require special IT skills and database skills, which can be time consuming and very costly. With limited resources, businesses are constantly striving to operate more efficiently, reliably, and within regulatory compliance. There's a lot of value in turning plant data into information that allows the plant to make bigger and better products while at the same time increasing its quality. Dream Report was created to solve these issues, to give you out-of-the-box reports with open connectivity and easy-to-use graphs and charts and templates. Dream Report requires no programming skills or scripting. Simple installation can produce reports in PDF, Excel, and web-based reports, which everyone can have access to. Dream Report's an open product which can be connected to multiple real-time and historical data sources. It can be connected to SCADA, HMIs, PLCs, DCSs, and other real-time data sources. Dream Report is connectivity to an open database such as Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, MS Access, Oracle, and even closed proprietary archives enable users to use Dream Report with existing archive solutions. Dream Report is designer-friendly, and again, it doesn't require any programming or skip scripting skills. No software development skills are required to design Dream Reports or automate reports. A third key advantage is Dream Report scalability. A scalable architecture makes Dream Report a great solution for small projects on a standalone machine with just a few report templates, as well as for a big reporting system with hundreds of report templates and hundreds of data sources. Reports can be produced in PDF, Excel, the web. You can easily make reports that look this good in just minutes. With Dream Reports, there's really just four steps to making a report. You connect to a data source, you design a report template, and then you generate reports, and finally, you can publish and distribute the reports on the web through Excel, PDF, printers, emails, and many other different ways. An end user can design and configure these reports to be generated by a predefined schedule, a real-time event, or even created on demand. In this slide, we have some photos of developer screens and a list of statistical functions that are pre-built into the software, like average, minimum, maximum, weighted average, and we have some more advanced things like on and off and counters. Dream Report has lots of pre-built functions that are easy for you to use. Dream Report has many drivers. Here's a list of OCP open communication protocols. Dream Report has direct communication to HMI SCADA and direct access to custom historians. Dream Report can be a center hub to connect all of your Wonderware products using out-of-the-box drivers. This is just an example illustrating that for you direct drivers, native drivers that work with all your Wonderware products. Dream Report connects directly to databases. You can use a tag browser to directly access data without knowing SQL or structured query language. Instead of having to write SQL, you can, just, you can instead just tag and browse over here and select the items to transport. Dream Report has a functional web portal where you can automatically generate dynamic reports. It runs in all common web browsers and mobile devices like Android and iOS. You can send it to user authentication and limit access to a predefined report list per user. Another great feature of interactive reporting is you can create reports that dynamically generate new data that people can edit on the fly and are made very simply. Even a casual user can enjoy all the benefits that Dream Report can provide. This slide highlights what I was just describing. There are drop-down lists, tag lists, date time picker, or just run reports. 
You can start from points by clicking embedded hyperlinks. You can generate reports dynamically that generate data and save the results in PDF. This is a quick shot of what that would look like in HTML, where it can all be on one page in one report. Mike Lapitan is now going to demo DreamReport through the web portal. He'll show you how to configure a driver using the Wonderware Historian. He'll define report objects like an automatic statistical table, a chart, a step table. He'll go through some report settings and he'll show you how to schedule the report and the different report file formats. And finally, Mike will show you how to configure the web portal. Mike? Great. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and pass the presenter roll over to you. Great. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I'm going to go ahead and take you through a demo of Dream Reports. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to start a new project, and I'm going to configure and automate a report and show you how easily it is to get started with Dream Reports. First off, I'd like to show you the Dream Reports web portal here with some example reports. Here's a monthly operating report for a water system looking at the residual flow rate, pH, temperature, daily flow. We'll go ahead and look at another report. Here's a monthly operating report, and this is more of like a water distribution, water production report as we're measuring water that's being pumped and flowed to different areas, storage tanks, and into distribution. So water and wastewater certainly have a lot of reporting, but so do manufacturing environments. So I'm going to show you uh, how to do an uptime downtime report as well as some, some charting and some statistical tables. So this Dream Report web portal, uh, the nice thing about it is you don't have to know anything about building web pages or being a web programmer to display reports and have a self-service reporting environment for your company to access data and reports. So first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. I'm going to open up the Dream Reports Studio. This is the development environment. And I'm going to create a new project. And I'll call my project name Webinar. And the first report, by default, is going to be called Report Zero. I'll change that in a moment. I'm going to show you the different drivers. This is how we connect to the data sources, what we're going to report off of. So, of course, we have Wonderware drivers, like the Wonderware Historian, which is what we're going to be working with today. We have a driver to connect directly to the InTouch historical files if you don't have a Wonderware Historian. If you don't have InTouch, there's open communication protocols, such as ODBC, to connect to your SQL Server databases, your Access databases. We can even use CSV and Excel data. There's third-party drivers from Illusion, Siemens, OSI. There's others that I don't have installed here. There's web manual drivers so that you can have manual data entry into forms through the web, the web page and save that data directly to a SQL Server database for reporting from both manual data as well as data that's already in databases. Uh, there's also a Wonderware alarm database driver so that you can report off of the alarms in your Wonderware system. So for today's illustration, we're going to use the Wonderware Historian and configure it. I'm going to give my driver a logical name called WW Historian. I'm going to click Configure. I don't need to enter the remote computer name my historian's running on because the historian's on my local computer. And I'm going to put in my SQL username and password so that I can connect to my database. I'm going to click Test Connection. I've got Test Connection succeeded, so I can click OK. And I'm going to click Add, so I've added that to my defined driver list. Now I'll be able to go browse the tags in my Wonderware Historian for reporting. So you can see I've got a blank report now called Report Zero. I'll go ahead and go into Report Settings and change the report name. And we'll just call this our Reactor Report. And I'm going to go into Report Time Definition. This is where I can specify when I want this report to run. Do I want this to be a daily report? What time do I want it to run? What days of the week would I like it to run? Maybe it's a monthly report that needs to run on the first day of the month or every day or even the last day of the month. It could be a yearly report as well. So this is where I can automate the scheduling of the report when it's generated. Very easy point and click checkboxes. I can generate reports on events. So if I have an alarm, if I have some type of event going on in my real-time control system, I can automatically generate that report and then have it emailed to folks. Maybe it's a maintenance type uh, event where I've reached a certain amount of runtime hours and I want to send out a, a maintenance activity report. I can choose to have the reports published in a HTML format on a web page, in PDF, 
I can automatically email reports, and so I can specify who I want to send these reports to. I can automatically print out the report using the printers on my network, and I can have a backup printer in case my primary printer is out of paper or it's not ready. And I can even push the data into Excel. So if I have an existing Excel template worksheet that I want to push the data into, maybe I have a regulatory report that's been provided by the state and I just want to push the SCADA information directly into that report template, I can do that as well. And so that would be using the, uh, an Excel template file that we're going to push the data into. And I'm going to go ahead and set this report to automatically open up in PDF whenever it's generated. So I'm going to click OK. So I've scheduled my report to run in, what, in the type of format I want. I'm going to go ahead and give my report a title now. So I'm going to draw a text box, and I'm going to type in reactor report. And I'm going to go ahead and change the, the text color. I'll actually leave it, I'll leave it um, black, but I'm going to underline it and make it larger. And I'll go ahead and use a company background image here, so I'm going to click this background button. Now I can browse, I can change the color of the background of the report, or I can set a background picture, which I'm going to go ahead and browse to my company background here. We'll just use this stock image. And I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, date time to my report. So over on the right-hand side, this is a very important concept, we have these report objects that you can configure for your data tables and charts and graphs. And so I have a date time object. I'm going to go ahead and draw the date time object on the top left. And I'm going to just call this my date and click OK. And I don't need it underlined. So now I've got the date time and a title and a report background Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and create a very easy uptime downtime table. And that's going to be using this automatic statistical table on the right hand side. So I'm going to click on this automatic statistical table button and I'm going to draw the object on my report. I'm going to select external history server because my one of our historians is an external history server. I'm going to click edit list and now my data source is my one of our historian and I can browse to a specific tag I want, and I'm going to go ahead and use my pump for my, to look at my uptime downtime from my pump. So I'm going to click Add, click OK, and here are some statistical functions that are out of the box. I'm going to go ahead and select, I want to see how many times that pump turned on, how many times it turned off, what was my running time, my downtime, and my system availability. So system availability is the percent of time it was running. And for the time period, I'm going to go ahead and pick a fixed period, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the, the current hour. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And if I want to test this object, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to load the project, so I'm going to reload the project. I'm going to save the changes. And there's another project that's running, so I'm going to stop. And let's just test that we've got some good data coming into our report for uptime, downtime of our pump. And I'm using the one of our historian, again, as a data source, and I do have InTouch running in the background. So if you can imagine you have a pump or a motor that's running in your plant, here's my concentrate pump, and right now you can see it's not running. I want to see what the uptime, downtime was. So my runtime management console opened up. I'm going to highlight my report name and click Generate. And you can see the report automatically opened up as we asked it to. And I can see how many number of times this pump has turned on and off, the total time it's been running, and the total time it's been down. So I can see I've, I've had 14.5% availability. So over the last hour, it's been running 14% of the time. So I'm going to go ahead and close this report and continue to do some development and minimize these other windows. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use that same statistical table. And instead of doing an uptime, downtime report, I'll go ahead and do some statistics on some analog tags. So again, I'll choose external history server, click edit list, select the Wonderware historian as my data source. And I'm going to go ahead and use uh, do system performance. And I'm going to use system performance uh, CPU zero just to look at my system performance. And this time I'm going to choose, I want the, the minimum 
the maximum and the timestamp of the maximum and the minimum. And I'll go ahead and get the average as well. And again, I'll do a fixed period. And I'm going to do the, the oh, 30 minutes this time because I actually haven't been running for a full hour yet this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and display a name. And I'm going to call this my system performance stats. Click OK. So now I've got a new statistical, automatic statistical table for my system performance. Let's go ahead and create a step table next. So over on the right-hand side, again, you can see that we're um, learning how to configure these report objects. I'm going to click Step Table, and I'm going to draw another object on my report. And I'm just going to have two columns in this Step Table. And in the Step Table, it allows us to, in, in this case, we're going to say, over the current 30 minutes, show us the value every minute. So you can see if you had a daily report and you needed to, to, to report off a 15-minute data, you could make the time period one day and the step period 15 minutes. If it was a weekly report and you wanted to look at daily information, the fixed period could be one week and the step period could be one day and you could look at daily summary information. So we're going to look at the data every minute over the current 30 minutes in this case for the step table. And so I'm going to click the appearance at the bottom here. And I'm going to give my table a name, and I'll call it my step table. And I'm going to give my column a caption, and I'm just going to call this time. And then under column type, I'm going to use the step start time. So that will be the timestamp of the step period every minute. And then I'm going to give my column two a, we're going to go ahead and just do uh, average. Or I'm sorry, we're going to do a value. And so I'm going to go ahead and click Step Data, and here's the, all of the, uh, actually first I need to give this object a name, sorry, this is going to be my, um, I'm just going to call this my last value. And I'm going to use my historian, and we'll go ahead and use reactor level this time from our reactor application. And here's the statistical functions I can choose. So I can choose the first value in the step period, the last value in the step period, the current value, the, mi the maximum, the minimum, the total flow in the period, if I have flow meters, the average. Again, I have uptime, downtime functions if I want to look at running time, downtime. If I wanted to make this a web form where I manually enter the data into the web page, I can choose manual input. You can see there's energy management functions and alarm functions if I want to re report on the number of alarms we had. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and I'll choose the last value in the uh, in the period. Click OK. And in result representation, if I wanted to to say that uh, this was going to be in gallons, I can add engineering units there. And maybe I don't want any values after the decimal point, so I'm going to click OK. So now I've got a step table configured for time and value. And lastly, I'm going to go and, and configure a chart. So this is my line chart here. I'm going to make this a bigger object. I'll go ahead and use reactor level. That was the last tag we configured, so I'll go ahead and click that uh, add line to add this to my line chart. And we'll go ahead and also add our reactor temp. So I'm going to use the filter to look for my reactor temp. And we'll compare reactor level against reactor temperature. And we'll go ahead and add a description to the legend for our level and our temperature. I'll go to the appearance and give our chart a name, and we'll call this reactor chart. And we're going to display the legend and click OK. I'm going to make my chart a little bit bigger and go ahead and reload our project. Save the changes. Runtime is reloading the project. And now it's reloaded, and we can go ahead and highlight a report to generate it. You can see it's in progress, and now it's been generated. So I have my uptime, downtime for my concentrate pump. I have the statistics on my system performance, the maximum, the time at the maximum, the minimum, the time at the minimum, and the average. I have a step table 
Remember, it's looking at the data every minute over the current 30 minutes. I've, it's got my engineering units as gallons. And now I have a chart over 30 minutes as well, looking at my reactor level against my reactor temperature. So that was really easy. Let's go ahead and take one more step in our project and configure the web page. So I'm going to click Web Configuration and click Configure IIS, which is Internet Information Services. That's a part of your Windows operating system. So it does all the configuration for you. Now we can simply go to Internet Explorer, open up our Dream Report web page, and view our reports. I can see that I have it in both PDF and web, because those are the report file formats I chose. But here's my report on a web page in PDF, and I can also look at it in HTML. HTML is more browser friendly if you want to access your reports on a mobile device and you don't have a PDF viewer. And if you want to do the manual data entry through web forms, you would use an HTML uh, report as well. Great, so thank you for letting me demonstrate Dream Reports and how easy it is to get started configuring reports and automating reports. And I'll go ahead and pass the controls back to you, Sherry. Thanks, thank Mike. you, Mike. And Sherry, I'm going to go ahead and give the presenter role back to you. Thanks, Kelly. There you go. Mike, you can see your screen. Great. Thanks, Mike. That was a great demonstration and done so quickly. Now I'd like to share with you some additional capabilities of Dream Report. Dream Report allows for easy manual data entry. Uh, users can enter and save manual data points through the Dream Report web portal, and you can create web reports using the data entry form. And data can be corrected and validated simply by clicking the manual data button and entering your change. You can also create batch reports in real-time events or user commands from a real-time tag, external tag, or from an external database. Reports can be automatically generated at the end of any batch, real-time events, URL command. You can have batch reporting through Dream Report as well. You can also create batch reports in real-time events. Sorry. For operating efficiency, equipment reports can expose those plant inefficiencies or remedial actions that need to be taken. Dream Report can show equipment up and down time, starts and stops, and the number of occurrences during a shift, a day, a week, a month, and a year, for instance. And Dream Report allows the easy sharing of this plant data often via the web. You can create reports to monitor your energy usage including electric metering, gas metering, water metering, or sewage. Again, you can do that weekly, monthly, yearly to create your, your unique energy consumption report. CFR 2111, Secure Environments, Dream Report is ready for this. For instance, there's a Windows integrated user management security and things like secure version ID stamp on controls. You can track user changes in secure databases and you can report Runtime engines run as services, all compliant as part of CFR 2111. By the way, CFR stands for Code of Federal Regulation. There's two versions of Dream Report. The difference is connectivity. Dream Report for Wonderware supports only Wonderware data sources. Dream Report standard supports an array, a wide array of data sources. Licensed by tag count and web clients, and any number of reports can be created as long as the number of tags licensed is not exceeded. A tag is only counted once, even if it is used in multiple reports. We can set you up with a 30-day demo. Dream Report's an open product which can be connected to multiple real-time and historical data sources. It's designer friendly. It doesn't require any programming or scripting skills. No software development skills are required to design reports or automate reports. The scalable architecture makes Dream Report a great solution for small projects on a standalone machine with just a few report templates, as well as for a big reporting system with hundreds of report templates and hundreds of data sources. Reports can be produced in PDF, Excel, and the web. Uh, don't for forget to check out and register for some of our upcoming events. We have uh, the In Touch class next week on the 13th. We still have a couple spots available. In uh, uh, December, December 2nd through the 5th, we have application server training in San Francisco. We have a webinar December 4th 
Uh, we have InTouch software for system platform training in San Francisco beginning Monday, December 8th. And then we have Plant Reporting Made Simple Workshop where you can get some hands-on experience uh, in San Francisco on December 12th. That concludes our Dream Report webinar today. Thank you for attending. Please use the chat box above to type any question. Great, thank you, Sherry. And uh, yes, like Sherry said, there's a Q&A box or a chat box, and um, this is the time to uh, get your questions answered. So go ahead and um, enter those in there. Um, Sherry, we do have a few questions and Mike that have come up um, during the webinar. So um, the first one is, I'm currently using HMI reports. What's the difference? Uh, Dream Report's an updated version of HMI reports. Uh, you can easily upgrade to Dream Report and move forward from there. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one is, I'm currently using Historian Client. Do I need Dream Report? I get asked that a lot. If you don't know how to automate Excel, which requires scripting, then Dream Report makes it much easier to automate reports. If you're currently using Historian Client, then Historian Client can only work with the Wonderware Historian. But with Dream Report, you can work with any database, including the Historian. Historian Client has an add-on to Excel, so if you're good with Excel, this can be a powerful tool. Historian Client has live trending. Dream Report does not have live trending. Okay, and um, one other question. What's the smallest Dream Report license? Uh, well, if you need more tags with a Dream Report license, you can start with, say, 50 tags, and the beauty is you can always add more. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that is all the questions that we have. So um, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Sherry. Um, and if anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar, a recording will be available on the website, norcal.wonderware.com, this afternoon. And again, if you have any um, additional questions that come up after this webinar, feel free to email us at webinar at norcal.wonderware.com. So thanks, everyone, for attending, and have a great weekend.